Hey guys, it's Charles of Premium B, and in this video, I'm gonna cover five tips for organizing your compositions in After Effects. These are tips that I use all the time, and I might even throw in a few bonus tips at the very end. So let's go ahead and get started. The first tip we're gonna look at is label colors. Hold up, now I know this is a simple and obvious one, but let me explain a few things. So in After Effects, you can see guys, we have all these different layers here and they have label colors assigned to them. Now we can obviously click on one of these and we can change one of these to another color if we want to. However, another option I really like to use is to click on one and come here to select label group. And you can see here it selects all of the red labels. In this case, it's all the text layers here in this composition. And you can do stuff like move those around, maybe turn off the visibility of those. So it's a nice way to kind of work with multiple layers. Now you may be wondering how can you assign kind of a default label color to a certain type of media, and we can do that as well. So if we come here to edit, let's come here to preferences, and you're gonna see labels. And that'll pop up these preferences here, and you can see we can assign colors to the different media types. We've got kind of the defaults. We can also rename the label colors, and we can actually customize these and change them to a different color tone if we want to as well. So you have quite a few different label options. I highly recommend taking advantage of those. The next tip is gonna be getting the most out of markers. So in After Effects, markers are another very common thing you can use to stay organized down here in your composition. So a quick shortcut for this is just the, on the numeric keypad, hit the asterisk key. And you can see when I don't have any layers selected, I'll actually put a marker up here, kind of on the timeline of the composition. And then if you wanna undo that, you can just hit Control Z after you do that to undo it. And if you wanna add markers directly to layers, just select a layer here and navigate over top of it and then just hit the asterisk key again there on the numeric keypad and it'll actually add that directly to the layer. I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that as well. And then again, up here on the timeline, you can see this little icon over here. It's like a marker icon. You can drag this over and you can place icons at different points if you just wanna do that. And it'll actually number these automatically. So this has a one and a two there. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and undo both of those. Now, another thing that's useful to know is when you have layers selected here, or maybe you wanna deselect this layer and add a marker up here to the top of the timeline. Uh, it can be a little difficult to figure out how to deselect this layer. So one thing you can do is just click on this gray area where there's no layers and that will deselect the layer. Another way you can do it is if you have one selected, just hit F2 on the keyboard there and that will actually deselect everything. So now you can add a marker. You have a few different ways you can delete a marker. So you can actually right click on it and you can see here you can see delete this marker or delete all markers if you have multiple ones. Another thing you do is hold down control or command on the keyboard and you'll see when I highlight over the marker, it kind of turns into these scissors and you can click and it will delete that marker. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add another marker back on this. And we have even more marker options. So I'm gonna double click on the marker and that will pop up this composition marker. And we can add in a comment here. So we can add in like needs editing. And then we can actually assign this a color. So if we wanna select one of these colors and this will be from the same label colors that we set in the preferences. So kind of going off that last tip as well. So it says the yellow. And you can also create a duration on this if you want. So it actually make the marker kind of wide. You can adjust how big you want it to be. So in this case, let's come here and let's type in two seconds. Go ahead and hit okay. And now you can see how that's adjusted that. So you see we have this yellow marker here, needs editing. You can actually click on the ends of this. You can stretch this out if you want to, maybe to increase the size of it. And you can move this around anywhere you want to at the top of your composition panel. And of course you can always add like a label on a marker directly on a layer. If you want to name different layers down here, give them different indicators, you can do that as well. And again, for this, if I want to delete this, I'm just gonna hold control here and click on the end of that and that'll delete that marker from the timeline. Next is gonna be using a project template. So you have a set folder for all of your different assets. This way, 40 years from now, when your grandkids open up your After Effects project, they can quickly find everything they need. Don't worry about the fact that the hard drive is correct. So setting up a project template is really easy. Like in this case with this project, I already have a bunch of folders over here. I would just keep everything organized. And you may not wanna do this every single time, you know, you're working with a new project, it's kind of tedious. So what you can do is just set up these folders before you have really started a project and just save this with nothing else in it but these folders as kind of your project template. And to do that, just come here to edit. Let's go over here to the preferences. I'm gonna to go to general and navigate down here to new project. And you can see this says new project loads template and you can choose a project template you've already saved. Again, this would basically be a blank project with that folder structure already set up in it. And you can create it any way you want, whatever folders work for you. And you would set that here. So you just click that and you would set it and then click OK. And then whenever you start a new project in After Effects, they'll already have all of the folders set up the way you want them to and even label the same way you want them to. So that's a nice kind of convenient way to stay a little more organized with that as well. Next, apply effects to adjustment layers or pre-comp your footage before applying any effects. 
Now this tip's gonna really improve your render speeds when you're working with media that's maybe bigger than the actual export size or whatever your composition size is. So in this case, I've got a 1920 by 1080 composition, but my footage here is quite a bit bigger than that. And so if I apply any effects directly to this footage, it's actually gonna apply them to all these areas that's not visible on screen. And that's gonna increase that render time as well. So you have two different options in this situation. One of the simplest is just to pre-comp this footage. So I could select that and go to layer and then pre-compose. And I'll just go in here and move all attributes into the new composition, click OK. Obviously now it's stretched out so it's a much longer length and I don't typically like that a lot of times. So I'm gonna actually undo that, hit Control Z. So we can also just add an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna right click, let's do a new adjustment layer. And it's gonna make it the same size as our composition. So that's nice. So any effects we apply to this will just be over this area. It won't be kind of covering up the extra parts that we don't need. What we will have to do here is trim the adjustment layer to kind of fit over top of our clip here. So I'm just gonna trim that up. And in this situation, let's say an effect that's pretty render heavy would be something like a camera lens blur. So with that adjustment layer selected, come over to effect and under blur, I'm gonna select camera lens blur. And let's go ahead and just increase this quite a bit. And when you're dealing with an adjustment layer, some effects may kind of have some edging artifacts. So you wanna turn on, you know, repeat edge pixels if an effect has something like that. But this can be a really nice tip if you're working with like, you know, some intense color correction on some footage or if you're applying effects that are pretty render heavy like camera lens blur. This just keeps you from rendering much more than you might need, again, because we're just wanting to render the dimensions of our composition for the effect and not necessarily the original footage size, which might be like 4K or even bigger than that. Finally, pre-render effects that you use a lot. Let me explain this one a little bit, so stay with me, folks. So back in the day, I worked at an ad agency and there were several effects that we would reuse for clients' commercials, you know, from one commercial to the next, things like specific flare transitions or certain little animations. Now, obviously with stuff like that, you could always import, like if you created it in a previous project, you could import that After Effects project in the one you're working on. The problem with that is it really tends to muddy up whatever new project you're working in because it imports all the assets from that other project. And usually it's a lot of files that you don't really need. Not to mention the fact that your render times are gonna be longer because it's rendering all those other assets, you know, from the original files. And it's also rendering the keyframe animations, motion blur, all that kind of good stuff. So instead with effects like that, what I recommend doing is actually rendering out those specific effects on an alpha channel. And that way you can just import in that one single file to whatever new project you're working in. And it's gonna render a lot faster because everything with that has already been pre-rendered, like the motion blur, the keyframes, all that good stuff. And it's just gonna be so much cleaner because you just have to import one single file to reuse. A good example of something like that would be like a social media icons that pop up on screen or like a sparkle animation. You guys get it. All right guys, as I mentioned earlier, this is gonna be bonus time. I've got two more quick tips for you. The first tip is if you guys wanna get even more organized, there's a ton of different After Effects plugins out there that can help you do just that. Now these are paid plugins, so don't throw anything at me. Actually, there's nobody else here, so I actually had to throw that myself and then roto around. But definitely check out A Scripts. They have a ton of plugins geared around staying organized in After Effects. I'll link to several that I like on the blog post for tutorials. So make sure to check for that in the description. Finally, the last tip, this is a free one, but it's insanely simple, and that's just putting an underscore at the beginning of whatever your main composition name is. I always do this because it'll put your composition at the very top of the project panel if you sort it by name and it makes it really easy to find the main comp when you need to go back in and revisit an old project. As a double bonus, it's gonna make it even easier for your grandkids as well. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed these tips. Be sure to check out some of the other videos we have on the Premium Beat channel, and I will catch you guys on the next one.